Hello student, this is Dr. Nesar and uh, today we are continuing with our previous uh, content as uh, all of you know we are studying about the unit number second okay of the compilers and uh, from today we have to continue with the online lecture as all of you know we cannot conduct the lectures physically. So once again, I welcome you all in this online lecture series. And uh, last time in the physical lecture sessions, we have uh, studied in the second unit uh, up to the predictive parser, our topic of the predictive parser was going on. And so today we'll start with the, uh, that point only. So already we have studied what exactly is the parsing is. So already we know Parsing is nothing but the kind of process where we construct the syntactic structure or where we construct the parse tree from the given set of tokens, where that set of tokens we receive from the first phase of compiler that is the lexical analyzer. So parsing is nothing but actually the process of determining whether the sentence can be syntactically correct, can be generated with the help of the grammar or not. So we can say the parsing is nothing but the process of determining whether the sentence or the set of tokens or stream of tokens are forming the sentence, whether that sentence is grammatically correct or not, or syntactically correct or not, whether the syntax of that particular syntax is correct or uh, sentence is correct or not. That is being checked with the help of the grammar. And as all of you know, you know, to construct the syntax analyzer, we utilize the context free grammar for the higher level language. Okay. So, uh, in order to do the parsing, we have to utilize the context free grammar. Now, grammar which don't have any restriction on utilization of their production rules, that particular grammar we call it as a context free grammar. So, this concept already we have discussed in the physically uh, when we have conducted the lectures in the classroom. Okay. So, also the parsing generally consists of uh, finding the derivation of the string according to the grammar, finding the derivation of the string in the sense means to check whether the string can be derived using the particular grammar or not. Okay, so derivation can be a two types that already we have discussed the leftmost derivation and the rightmost derivation. If you choose the leftmost symbol uh, to be replaced, then that derivation is called as a leftmost derivation. And if you choose the rightmost symbol to be replaced, that particular derivation is called as the rightmost derivation. So uh, in case of the uh, predictive parser, which is the type of the top down parser, generally we utilize the leftmost derivation. Okay. And from that derivation, we can construct the parse tree. If the parse tree can be constructed, then we can say the syntax of the particular sentence is correct or uh, syntax of the particular stream of tokens is correct. Okay, so basically we have to make the utilize of context free grammar for the parsing and parsing is nothing but the checking whether the syntax of the statement is correct or not by generating the parse tree from the stream of tokens that we receive from the lexical analyzer. So in the lexical analyzer, which is being also, uh, uh, in case of the syntax analyzer, we have to utilize the different production rules and that production rules nothing but the are part of your, your context free grammar which is given. So basically syntax analyzer where we check the syntax of the statement and you have to check the syntax of the statement we have to make the utilization of the context free grammar. Okay. And from that context free grammar we have to utilize the different production rules and according to the utilization of production rules the dividation of parsing is being done. Okay. So if you choose the non-terminal to be replaced by the terminals, then that is being referred as a derivation. And if you choose the terminal to be replaced by the non-terminal, then that particular way of implementing the production rule that is called as a reduction. So on the basis of that, there are the two types of the parsing. And that two types are the first is the top down parsing and second is the bottom up parsing. Okay. So if you start deriving the string from the root side up to the leaves, then that particular parsing is called as a 
top down parsing and if you start deriving the string from bottom side to the top up to the root that particular parsing is called as a bottom up parsing so uh, way of parsing is only the different aim of both of this parsing is the same our aim is what to check whether particular stream of tokens which is forming this sentence or whether particular string is syntactically correct or not that we are checking with the help of the this uh, two techniques first is the top down parsing and another technique is the bottom up parsing okay result of both of this technique is same so result conclusion we are going to get is whether that particular string or sentence or stream of token is syntactically correct or not that we are going to decide with the help of this top down parsing or bottom up parsing okay then uh, this is the dividation of the parser that further we are going to study so generally uh, the top down parser uh, or the bottom up parser used to build the parse tree and as you are, you can see here i have mentioned the top down parser build the parse tree from the root to the bottom build the parse tree from the root to the leaves and that is the reason it is called as a top down parsing okay so here also i have mentioned the top down parse related with the pre order traverser of the parse tree pre order traverser of the parse tree means uh, traversing the parse tree from the left side that is the reason it is being referred as a pre order traverser of the parse tree okay so leftmost derivation uh, we are going to apply at each step when we are going to derive some particular string okay now uh, top down parser also there are the various types of the top down parser are there some of the top down parser require the backtracking some of the top down parser don't need the backtracking what exactly the backtracking that in the physical lecture we have seen okay so again this top down parser is divided into the two main categories in that first is the predictive parser and second is the recursive predictive recursive descent parsing okay and again bottom up parser also divided into the different types main type in that is the shift reduce parsing and these are other its sub types like llr parser canonical parser slr parser and the operator precedence parser so in the further section of this unit we are going to see that in details okay so uh, in the physical lecture already i have told you what exactly is the recursive descent parser okay let's uh, uh, recap it once again so recursive descent parsing uh, take the input okay and try to derive the uh, that input string if that input string can be derived correctly by using the grammar then we can say that particular string is syntactically correct so in case of the recursive descent parser uh, it consists of the different functions for the different non terminal which is part of your grammar now this is the grammar we are taking for the example uh, and this is the string we have to derive using this grammar understood so in case of the recursive descent parser for each of these non terminal a procedure or the functions are written okay that is i have mentioned here several small function for each non terminal are written in the grammar okay so a procedure or the function is associated with each non terminal of the grammar so how to write that procedure and function that in the physical lecture we have seen that example okay here we are just going to implement the practical example so main thing in case of the recursive descent parser is what it requires the backtracking understood now what exactly the backtracking why it is required let's see so main thing in case of the recursive descent parser that you should keep in mind that this parser don't give us any idea about which production rule we should utilize so sequentially we have to choose the production rule one by one so now here we have to derive the string read this string we have to derive using this particular grammar so we'll start with the starting symbol okay so we start deriving from the starting symbol okay so from so this production rule we have to utilize here starting production rule so it is deriving to the r x d so if you try to match with match our string with this our first r is matching here okay and then we move forward to the next input symbol that is the small e but you can see there is a next symbol is the non terminal so again we have to simplify this non terminal we have to utilize the production rule for this non terminal so production rule here we have the oa so we uh, we derive the uh, we simplify this uh, we utilize this production rule where the non terminal x is giving the o and a so we extend the parse tree further again we check again we check our input so first we check our first input r is matching yes 
second input is the e so e is the, e is not matching here is the e is matching here no is the e is matching here no so this production rule is not satisfying our uh, what you can say uh, the deriving the particular input string read okay so what can be done then then you have to go back you have to go back to the previous step and again you have to check the next production rule so that you can determine whether using this production rule we can derive this string or not so going back to the previous non terminal previous stage that is called as the backtracking and so as i said the recursive descent parser require the backtracking okay again here we go to the and we uh, take the next production rule so here we get the result of that production rule x is uh, giving us the uh, production rule ea so again we check our input r is matching yes e is matching yes a is matching with our input yes and d is also matching so here this is nothing but the deriving our particular input string according to this grammar so we can derive this input string it means this is syntactically correct string understood and this because this can be derived with the help of this context free grammar but here we have to utilize the backtracking principle and because of that if the uh, string is too long and grammar is also too large so in that case sequentially production rule we have to utilize and because of that a uh, lot of uh, time consumption can be happen because of this principle of the backtracking so that is the main disadvantage of the recursive descent parser because of that it is not being prefer in uh, designing of the compiler okay so then let's move forward to the next type of our parser that is our predictive parser okay now predictive parser has the capability to do the prediction now to do the prediction means what prediction regarding which production rule to be utilized now in case of the previous uh, previous uh, type of the parser that is the rdp we are choosing the production rule sequentially but predictive parser give us the idea it give us the uh, what can say the feature of the prediction which production rule you should cho uh, choose to replace the to derive the particular input string to get the particular input string or to check the particular syntax of the input string so that is the reason name given to this predictive parser uh, name given to this parser as a predictive parser and this one of the best uh, advantage of this it doesn't require any backtracking so that uh, disadvantage of time consumption is also uh, uh, remove in case of the predictive parser okay so number of things we have to utilize in the predictive parser we utilize the look ahead pointer okay look ahead pointer means what suppose we have the input like this id plus id into id now this particular input string we have to uh, check whether it is syntactically correct or not so this input string is been track with the help of this look ahead pointer now this is the look ahead pointer which gives the idea which input symbol we have to which input symbol uh, we are trying to derive now with the help of this predictive parser okay so that is the reason here i have mentioned the predictive parser uses the look ahead pointer which point to the next input symbol so if this input if this input symbol match then we move forward to the next input symbol in this way we go until we encounter this last symbol that is the dollar now this dollar symbol indicate the end of the that particular string now this string we have to derive uh one by by one by one input symbol we have to uh, uh uh match with the help of the given production rules okay uh, which is where the production rule will be the part of your context free grammar okay so here we are going to utilize the context free grammar and we will try to derive this string and here uh, you know to keep the track of which input symbols are being match you know to do that we use the look ahead pointer okay so here you can say to make the parser backtracking free predictive parser uh, have put some constraint there is a certain kind of grammar is being utilized in case of the predictive parser okay now which kind of grammar is utilized in the predictive parser that particular grammar is referred as a llk grammar okay now here meaning of the k is nothing but how much uh, how, which, how, much, how many input symbol we are going to see at a time to match it with the our uh, particular production rules okay so here we are in case of the predictive parser we are going to uh, we are going to focus on only one input symbol at a time uh, 
uh, for the matching purpose and that is the reason as a predictive parser only focus on only one input symbol of the string at a time that is the reason the predictive parser is also called as a llln parser okay here we are going to concentrate on only one input symbol at a time that is the reason here one indicate the we are going to focus on one look ahead symbol at a time and that is the reason from that the name given to the predictive parser is also the ll1 parser okay now what exactly does ll1 stands for that also we have discussed before uh, let me tell you once again so ll1 grammar is the uh, also the subset of context free grammar with some restriction now let's see what exactly this ll1 stands for so in the ll1 the first l stands for the parsing the input from left to the right and second l in the ll1 stands for the left most derivation okay and one means one input symbol of look ahead okay one means one input symbol of the look ahead at a time will choose uh, you know to do the parsing so here the in the diagrammatic form also it is being represented okay now what are the uh, what are the steps we have to follow uh, when you are utilizing the predictive parser uh, to parse the particular string so the steps we have to follow are nothing but this removing the unreachable production from your uh, grammar removing the ambiguity from the grammar elimination of left recursion left factoring the grammar and most important finding the first and follow and constructing the parse table so these are the things already in the classroom when we have conducted the lecture physically that already we have seen okay so now uh, here you can see the uh, what kind of steps we have to follow now here you can see the different kind of data structure that we have to utilize in constructing the predictive parser okay or utilizing the predictive parser to parse or uh, to derive some string now here input contain the uh, so the, what are that different data structure we have to utilize in the pa predictive parser that data structure nothing but the first thing is the input buffer okay what we have to utilize the input buffer second thing we have to utilize is the stack okay stack what the stack will contain stack contain the sequence of grammar symbol and at the bottom of stock stack we have the dollar okay and here at in case of the input buffer we have the dollar at the end of that particular string which indicate the right hand marker of the string initially our stack contain the starting symbol of the grammar uh, preceded by the dollar symbol okay where this dollar symbol indicates what the end of that particular uh, what you can say uh, here in case of the stack dollar symbol indicate the bottom of the stack okay now what exactly our parsing table is consist of so here our parsing table is consist of the two dimensional array okay what the two dimensional array where that two dimensional array is look like this where this capital a indicate the non terminal and this small a indicate the terminal symbol okay so in this is nothing but our parsing table in the example we will see what exactly the parsing table look like okay so mainly there are the three data structure using which the predictive parser uh, can be built in that first is the input buffer second is the stack and third is the parsing table okay so in this this is the parsing this is in this way your parsing table look like okay so you can see here uh, how your parsing table look like so here you can see this is the your input buffer which is ended by the dollar indicate the end of your input this is the stack which contain the uh, grammar symbols okay when you utilize some grammar symbols this is your predictive parsing program or the algorithm and this is nothing but our parsing table and here it will give us the output now what will be the output output will be whether that string is syntactically correct or not or whether that string is successfully parsed or not if the string is successfully parsed it means the syntax of that string is correct syntax of that particular stream of token is correct syntax of that particular sentence is correct that is the meaning of the uh, successful parsing okay now you know to construct this parsing table two important function we have to utilize okay you know to construct this parsing table two important functions we have to utilize in that first function is the name of the uh, first function is the first function itself and name of the second function is the follow function now with the help of these two function first and follow we are going to construct the 
parsing table okay now how to construct the first and follow that also in the physical lecture we have seen now here we directly uh, uh, focus on the example okay now here you can see this is the string we have to parse means this is the string we have to check whether it is the syntactically correct or not means we have to check whether this sentence is syntactically correct or not and for that in order to check that we have given this grammar okay in order to check that we have to given this grammar now first thing we have to check whether this grammar is left recursive because already we have seen the top down parser is having some restriction and one of the restriction is what the top down parser cannot work with the left recursive grammar now how to identify the left recursive grammar if the left 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 hand side of the grammar is similar to the left most symbol of your rhs then in that case that grammar is called as a left recursive grammar and we know the disadvantage of left recursive grammar is what the left recursive grammar cannot be parse it cannot be utilized for the parsing in case of the top down parsing because it is taking us to the infinite loop that is the disadvantage of utilizing the left recursive grammar now if this kind of grammar is given that grammar you have to convert into the right recursive grammar and how to convert this in the physical classes we have seen how to convert this so that will be the this will be the result of our conversion where we have convert this left recursive grammar into the right recursive grammar so right recursive grammar is nothing but what when the left hand side of grammar is similar to the rightmost symbol of rhs that particular grammar is called as a left recursive grammar okay now let's see here how to construct the parsing table okay how to construct the parsing table so here we have given the input string this input string we have to derive or we have to parse or we have to check whether it is syntactically correct or not now in order to do that first thing we have to perform is nothing but we have to construct the parsing table okay now how you are going to construct the parsing table uh, as i told you the rows of the parsing table consist of the different non terminal symbols now in this grammar these are the different non terminal symbol you can see e e dash t t dash and the f and column consist of the input symbol or the terminals now in this grammar these are the terminals id plus star open brace close brace and the dollar these are our terminals so in this way you have to put down these things in this table and then next we will fill this parsing table now how we are going to fill this parsing table so we will fill the parsing table uh, with the help of this first and follow function as i told you with the help of what first and follow function now how to calculate the first and follow that also in the physical classes i already told you so here we have calculated the first and follow okay this is the calculation of first and follow for this grammar and this is the calculation of follow for the given grammar now how to put the entries in the parsing table that we have to focus now now you can see the here first of f we have now for each non term for each this non terminal symbol we have to calculate the first and follow okay now you can see what is the first of f first of f we have calculated here first of f we have calculated here as a open brace and the id now in the parsing table now initially this parsing table will be empty uh, this is the solved example i will just tell you how to put this how these entries are uh, coming here now first of f we have the open brace and the id so under the f you have to see the where is the open brace here and where is the id here so under the open brace and the id you have to put this production that is the f deriving the id so under the id you have to put the production f deriving the id here we have put down and under the production under the uh, terminal symbol open brace you have to put this production f deriving the e means whatever the first of f whatever the first of f that you have evaluated under that you have to make the entry of this production so first of f here our uh, is open brace so for the open brace under the open brace we have make the entry of this first production f deriving the uh, in, bra in braces uh, non terminal e and below the id we have make the entry f deriving the id okay now next we have the first of t dash now first of t dash is the star and the epsilon so under the now here in the production you have to see 
t dash this is the production so this production entry so under the star under the star now here you have to see where is the t dash here so in the t dash under the star you have to make the entry of star ft dash here you have made the entry of star ft dash okay now if some non terminal is non terminal in the first of some non terminal there is a epsilon now in case of this epsilon comes in the uh, first of some non terminal in that case you have to see its follow what you have to see its follow when you have to see its follow when some non terminal when in the some non terminal uh, in the first of some non terminal there is a entry of epsilon so when you are evaluating this this entry of epsilon is being uh, come here so how how to evaluate that already in the physical classes we have seen so now how to make the entry for epsilon now we have to make the entry for epsilon we have to see the follow up t dash now what is the follow up t dash plus close brace and the dollar so for the this production t derives epsilon so under each of this terminal symbol you have to make the entry of t deriving epsilon so here you have make the entry under the plus because follow up t dash is the plus here you have make the entry of t dash deriving the epsilon because follow up uh, t dash is the close brace and also the dollar and so under the dollar also you have to make the entry of this uh, t dash deriving the epsilon so you have to keep in mind when you have to take the follow when particular first of no, for some non terminal is uh, in the first of some non terminal there is a epsilon so in the first of t dash there is a epsilon so to make the entry in the parsing table you have to see the follow up t dash and whatever the follow up t dash is there under that you have to make the entry of t dash deriving the epsilon next first of t so first of t we have the open brace and the id so t under the id we make the entry of t deriving the f dash so t deriving the here t deriving the ft dash and also under the uh, uh, open brace also you have to make the entry of t deriving the ft dash okay then we have next first of e dash so first of e dash we have the plus and the epsilon so e dash is where here so under the plus we make the entry of e deriving e dash deriving the plus t dash so here under the plus you made the entry of e deriving the plus t dash now here you come the epsilon now for this you have to see the follow up e dash now where is the follow up e dash here we have the follow up e dash so e dash deriving the epsilon e dash deriving the epsilon this production rule will be enter for these two terminal symbols that is the close brace and the dollar so under the close brace and the dollar you make the entry of e dash deriving the epsilon okay then last is the first of e so first of e is the open brace and the id so first of e is the here you have to see the production rule e derive the t dash this production rules entry you have to make under the id and under the open brace so in this way your parsing table will be get constructed understood so main thing here is nothing but you should able to uh, evaluate the first and follow and later on this how to make the entry that already we have told here one thing you keep in mind whenever there is the dollar whenever in the first of any non terminal symbol epsilon come then in order to make the entry of for that you have to see the particular uh, follow up particular non terminal symbol if first of in the first of t dash uh, epsilon comes now in order to make the entry of uh, t dash deriving the epsilon you have to see the follow up t dash and under the follow up t dash you have to make the entry of t dash deriving this epsilon okay so in this way for any given uh, grammar and you know to derive the any input string you can make the entry in the parsing table in this way okay now next is nothing but our how to now this is the uh, second step that is construction of the parsing table okay previous to before that step was what we are looking the first and follow okay and before that also you have to perform the one step that is the identification of the grammar so first step is first step is what for the given grammar check whether the grammar is left recursive if it is left recursive convert into the right recursive this is the first step second step is nothing but the for that given grammar construct the first and follow and third step is constructing the parsing table and last step is nothing but our construct uh, deriving the particular string when particular string is uh, given 
Now we have given the particular string id plus id into the id. Now how to derive that? That we will see. Welcome, student. Once again. Now here we have seen how to construct the parsing table with the help of the first and follow function. Now our main task we have to perform is nothing but we have to parse this string. We have to check this string is syntactically correct or not. Now for that purpose, here uh, we are going to see how to parse this string. Okay. Uh, now as I told you, the parsing table consists of the three main uh, structure like stack, input, and the uh, uh, parsing table itself. This is our parsing table, and then we have the this is the actions or the outputs. Now let's see how we will proceed. Now you can see here. Uh, Okay, let's see. Now, as I told, initially the stack at the bottom of the stack there is a dollar, and above the dollar there is a starting symbol. So our starting symbol of the grammar is what non-terminal e. Okay. Now this is already the uh, constructed predictive parser. Okay. This is the solution. Now here I am telling you how we have got this solution. Okay. So initially. you have to start with the dollar and above the dollar there will be the uh, there will be the starting symbol okay and here you can see our starting symbol is e okay now we have to see in the table then e on id so this is our input string that we have to check so you have to see e on id now e on id which production rule uh, which production rule prediction is happening here now here predictive parser is predicting how it is predicting with the help of the parsing table so you have to see e on id so e on id is the production rule is what e deriving the t dash means if you want to derive this first input symbol that is the uh, id now our look ahead pointer initially Point to this input symbol. Okay. Now, so you have to derive, you know, to uh, you know, to parse this string. First, we have, we have to go, uh, we have to uh, match this input symbols so one by one. Okay. We have to match in the sense we have to check from that given grammar can we able to parse this string successfully or not. Okay. So let's see. Now, how we are going to do that? We have to see e on id. so in order to derive the id you have to see which production rule you should utilize so you have to see what e on id in the production rule in the sorry parsing table so e on id in the parsing table it is telling us that you should utilize which production rule e derives the t dash so for that you can see here we have utilized in order to get the second step in order to get the second step we have to utilize the production rule that is what e deriving the t e dash now in the stack you have to make the entry like this means e dash you have to write first and then you have to write the t okay so this is like you have to read this like the t e dash okay then now what is on the top of the stack on the top of the stack there is a t okay what is on the top of the stack t so next you have to see t on id t on id is what t deriving the ft dash so that that will be the result in the next step t deriving the ft dash okay so that also we have to write like this ft dash starting from the right hand side ft dash okay now next we have to see here f on id f on id in the table f on f on id it is uh, the predictive parser telling us which production rule you should utilize f on id f deriving the id so he, this production rule we have utilized f deriving the id result of this will be what result of this now will be this you can see id because here f is replaced by the id now this id now top of the stack id is this uh, small terminal on the top of the stack id and here our input our input is what id first our input symbol is what id so both of these are matching so this will be get popped okay 
then what is remaining the next e dash t dash what e dash t dash and what is the in remaining input string plus id plus id into the id followed by the dollar so next what we have to see t dash on the plus t dash on the plus so the parsing table giving us the idea you should utilize the which production rule t dash deriving the epsilon so here in the next step you utilize this step result of this t dash deriving the epsilon this t dash will be get cancel okay and only remain is what e dash next you have to see the e dash on plus in the table e dash on the plus in the table so table suggesting you should utilize the production rule e dash giving plus t dash to derive the plus okay so once these things get cancel um, our first input symbol get match with the stack uh, top of the stack then our input pointer will be proceed to the next input symbol okay our look ahead pointer will be proceed to the next input symbol and it will focus on the plus only one only one input symbol at a time that is the reason this parser is also called as a ll1 parser so you have to see the so where we were so we were at this point result of uh, uh, result of what e dash on the plus e dash on the plus is giving us the e dash deriving the plus t e dash now here e dash will be e dash will be replaced by what plus t dash starting from the right hand side okay plus t dash next we have to see the plus on the i now you can see here this our look at symbol is this and our top of the stack is also the plus so these are matching so this will get cancel okay and our in look at input symbol pointer will proceed to the next input symbol this okay so from that now result is what we have got the e dash t and input remaining is this next we have to see the t on id in the table t on id the production rule should utilize what t derives ft dash so t derives ft dash here t on id we utilize the t derives ft dash we have to write it from uh, starting from the right hand side so this okay next we have to see the f on id f on id f on id is the f on id is nothing but this production rule f deriving the id so result of this will be the this and here you can see our look at symbol was this so this is matching with this so get this will get cancel okay and only remain is what a dash t dash and star id dash star uh, id dollar now you have to see the next t dash on star t dash on star the parsing table telling us you should utilize this production rule so t dash on the star we use this production rule result of that will be the this star ft dash e dash now on the top of the stack is the star our look ahead pointer is at this symbol this is matching get this will get cancel so next our look ahead pointer will be point to this next input symbol okay so what is remaining now e dash t dash f so top of the stack is what this f so again we see f on id so again f on id is also uh, uh, we have the production rule f derives the id so we utilize this production rule result of this will be we will get this and this with this get match get cancel now lastly our look ahead pointer will point to the dollar now what is remaining here e dash t dash so here you have to see t dash on the dollar so t dash on the dollar t dash on the dollar is production rule t dash epsilon the result of this this t dash will get cancel again you have to see the e dash on the dollar e dash on the dollar this is the production rule you should utilize result of this production rule utilize utilization is what this will get cancel on the bottom of the stack if you have the dollar and in the input also if you have the dollar it means the successful parsing has been done what it means the successful parsing has been done and what is the meaning of successful parsing is what this string that is id plus id into id this is syntactically correct so this is nothing but the predictive parser and how it works so you can see we don't have to think anything about which production rule to utilize the predictive parser automatically giving us the idea using the parsing table which production rule you should utilize so there is a no backtracking you can see as compared with the recursive descent parsing and that is the reason this is the better than the recursive descent parsing here i also i have written if we get the dollar at the end of the stack as well as we get the dollar on the right side of the input buffer 
it means given string is syntactically correct here we have got the dollar at the dollar at the bottom of the stack here we have got the dollar at the right side of the input buffer it means parsing has been successfully done and this string is syntactically correct okay so uh, in this way you can take the other different example and try to parse the string now for your know, practice purpose here i have given you the uh, uh, example next i have given you the example okay this is the example that you have to solve construct the predictive parser or the ll1 parser for the following grammar and parse the string here you have to parse the which string you have to parse acdb and the you have given the context free grammar this okay now here also i have given you the hint how you can proceed to parse this string using the predictive parser steps i have mentioned check whether the given grammar is left recursive or not first thing you have to check evaluate the first and follow for given grammar construct the parsing table and validate the string means do the parsing means do the parsing means do the parsing like this do the parsing like this by uh, putting the uh, uh, at the bottom of the stack dollar and taking the starting symbol here of your grammar and putting your input string here and go by parsing the way i told you here okay so i told you how this parsing uh, is being done by matching these different things i told you okay now another question is being asked on this topic is nothing but uh, this question check whether the following grammar is ll1 grammar or not so most of the time this kind of question is asked what check whether the given grammar is ll1 grammar or not now this is the grammar given okay this is the grammar <coughs> given now how you can check the whether grammar is ll1 or not now for that purpose you have to calculate the first and follow for this grammar then you have to construct the parsing table for this grammar so this is the parsing table for this grammar you can check it okay now in order to determine whether the particular uh, grammar is ll1 or not in order to do that you have to follow these properties of the ll1 grammar and now properties are given here first property is what the given grammar must not be a it it must not be ambiguous it must be a, a no uh, the given grammar must not be ambiguous grammar okay no ambiguity should be there and it must be a, it must not be a left recursive grammar then that grammar is called as a ll1 grammar what is what is the condition for the ll1 grammar the grammar should be the non ambiguous and the grammar should not be the left recursive understood second important thing <coughs> is all entries in the parsing table must be unique what what do you mean by the all entries in the parsing table must be unique means what now you can see in this parsing table entries for different terminal symbols entries for different terminal symbols are single entries of the production rules nowhere you nowhere you can see the double entries for the production rules nowhere and that is the reason okay so what we are discussing here uh, how to identify whether given grammar is a uh, ll1 or not so for that you must uh, understand and you must uh, able to uh, uh, keep in mind these properties first in this grammar must be a non ambiguous i told you which grammar we call the ambiguous which grammar we call the non non ambiguous how to convert the ambiguous into the non ambiguous that also i told you second in that ki grammar must not be a left recursive grammar grammar must be a right recursive then that grammar we call as a ll1 second thing is what all entries in the parsing table must be unique for ll1 grammar means for this grammar entries in the parsing table must be unique what is meaning of that here i have mentioned there should not be two production rule entries for the same terminal symbol in the parsing table means for this plus in case of the non terminal symbol t dash here only one entry is there okay for e dash for the terminal symbol star only one entry is there okay now if for the e dash in order to derive the symbol star if there is a one more entry in this in this particular column okay then in that case we cannot say what is the meaning of one more entry for the same terminal symbol in this column meaning of that will be what meaning of that will be the 
parser will not able to determine which production rule to be utilized in order to in order to derive this particular symbol or in order to parse this particular symbol which is part of the string what i am saying suppose consider here in case of the f deriving this plus here are the productions are like these i am just telling you as an example f deriving the a and f deriving the b now here you can see the two production rules are there in the same column for the terminal symbol plus if this kind of situation is coming when you are constructing the parsing table for certain grammar in that case then that particular grammar will not be considered as a ll1 grammar understood that is the meaning of this there should not be two production rule entries for the same terminal symbol in the parsing table so two production rule entry in the sense what the parser will be get confused whether this production rule to utilize or this understood so that particular grammar is not considered as a ll1 grammar so ll1 grammar is having the unique entries for each particular sim terminal symbol okay you can see there for each particular symbol now for each particular terminal symbol there are the unique entries related with the particular non terminal symbols you will see, you will never you will not see anywhere in the column two production rule entries understood so the question here which is being asked check whether the grammar is ll1 or not so this grammar is the definitely the this grammar is what ll1 because here in this uh, uh, parsing table we don't have any double entries of the production rule for particular terminal symbol understood so i hope you have got this and i have told you to do the practice using this example and do the homework okay so that's it from this lecture okay next part we will continue in the next lecture